Today's webinar is eligible for one contact hour. Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing is accredited as a provider of nursing continuing professional development by the American Nurses Credentialing Center's Commission on Accreditation. The speakers and planning committee members have disclosed no conflicts of interest. To receive contact hours for this CME session, participants are required to attend the webinar and complete the evaluation form, which will be emailed to all attendees approximately one week after the webinar. This webinar is being recorded and will be available via the Sigma repository within a few business days of recording. Following the presentation, we may have time for questions and answers. If you would like to ask questions during the presentation, you may do so in the GoToWebinar control panel. You should see the GoToWebinar Go control panel on your screen. You can send a message through the questions feature. This is where you can type any question you'd like to pose to the presenters. Be sure to hit send so that the message makes it to us. To test this out, please locate your GoToWebinar Go control panel and type in your country or U.S. state in the questions feature now. On behalf of Sigma, we would like to thank our speakers for sharing their expertise with us today. Today, our webinar speakers from the International Society for Professional Identity and Nursing will be Dr. Kristen Pretty, Dr. Julie Reed, and Carrie Ann Waybrew. Dr. Pretty has been a nurse for 30 years with a clinical background in labor and delivery nursing. She has taught undergraduate nursing for 23 years. Dr. Pree has conducted ground theory research on formation of pro professional identity and serves on the advisory council of the International Society for Professional Identity in Nursing. Her mission is to understand, touch, and improve nursing education in the United States and around the world. Dr. Reed is a senior director of nursing practice and transformational leadership for Kaiser Permanente. She is known for her passion around creating nursing excellence to ensure quality patient outcomes. Dr. Reed re received her bachelor's and master's degrees in nursing from the University of Rochester and a doctorate of nursing practice from the University of San Francisco. Dr. Reed has held leadership positions in nursing, quality, and patient safety. She currently provides leadership for enterprise-wide strategic initiatives in nursing practice. Ms. Waybrew is an experienced program administrator, healthcare provider, and leader with a demonstrated history of successful outcomes working in a higher education industry. Skilled in nursing management, education, women's health, critical care, and healthcare, she is a team-oriented ethical healthcare services professional with a master's of science focused in women's health, nurse practitioner, and studies in nursing education from the University of Missouri, Kansas School of Nursing, and passionate about transforming the future of nursing. Thank you all for sharing your time and your expertise with us today. Welcome everyone. Thank you, Minister. Oh, <laughs> thank you. We appreciate the opportunity to, to present to you today. The, the information on professional identity that we're presenting represents the work of dozens of experts and leaders in nursing over the course of three years. After participating in this session, we hope that you'll be able to discuss the definition and domains of professional identity in nursing, explain the benefits of illuminating and fostering professional identity in nursing, and summarize the key findings from the existing body of scientific knowledge on professional identity in nursing. Nursing has been wrestling with the question of professionalism for two centuries. I've heard it said that if you ask 20 nurses what professionalism means, you'll get 20 different answers. And nursing's not alone in its endeavors. In recent years, medicine and other healthcare disciplines have engaged in focused efforts to describe professionalism through the lens of professional identity. Going back a little ways, in 1910, the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching published the first report on what it means to prepare and educate health professionals in the United States, authored by Abraham Flexner. 
This report led to standardi standardization of medical curricula and elimination of medical programs that weren't based in a scientific approach to medicine. The Flexner report shaped the medical profession as we know it today. Despite the need to understand the topic of professional identity, there was a dearth of literature. Oh. Well, a quick fast forward. <laughs> I'm so sorry. A quick fast forward through the 20th century shows how our thinking on forming medical and nursing professionals has evolved. From the time of Florence Nightingale, the way we thought about forming and fostering a new nurse was grounded in a virtues based approach. Qualifications for entering and completing nursing training included demonstrating good character and the virtues that were believed to be important in nursing. In the 1960s, both medicine and nursing adopted a competency based approach, which was based in behaviorist psychology. And in many cases, this is where we remain today. But what's next for us as a profession and as a discipline? The International Society for Professional Identity in Nursing would argue that we need an approach that integrates virtue and competency by focusing on formation of professional identity. Despite the need to understand the topic of professional identity, there was a dearth of literature across a number of healthcare disciplines. In 1996, the first concept analysis on professional identity in nursing was published. And in 2019 alone, there were 336 publications on professional identity in the global literature. Dr. Nelda Godfrey at the University of Kansas is currently working with a colleague on a scoping review of articles published across health disciplines and around the world. A professional identity approach aligns with two important studies that were published 100 years after the Flexner report. Many of you are familiar with the Institute of Medicine on the Future of Nursing report published in collaboration with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation in 2011. This report called for nurses and the healthcare system to understand and embrace the identity of nurses through allowing nurses to practice to the full extent of their education and training and to be full partners with physicians and other health professionals in designing and implementing healthcare delivery in the United States. The second study, Educating Nurses, A Call for Radical Transformation, was published by the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching in their series on the preparation for the professions. This study called for four essential shifts on role so, um, in preparing nurses for the nursing profession, including a shift from a focus on role socialization to a focus on identity formation. Thank you, Kristen. Well, from this, um, in 2018, a group of 50 nursing experts and leaders representing education, practice, and regulation gathered at the University of Kansas Medical Center to hold the first ever meeting in professionalism in nursing on, ever on record. Out of this think tank was born the International Society for Professional Identity in Nursing. Looks like we lost Carrie for a moment. The task of this group of experts and leaders was to adopt a shared definition of professional identity in nursing, to identify the critical domains of professional identity in nursing, and to begin defining the elements and competencies of each. Working with an artist in real time, the think tank participants developed a tree of impact, illustrating the foundations and ultimate impact of formation of professional identity in nursing. Sorry, I was trying to advance the slide and it did it shut off my webcam. <laughs> Let's see if I can advance that proper here. Okay, thank you, Kristen. So <clears throat> building on some of the really exquisite work of the professional identity in medicine, Dr. Nelda Godfrey and Dr. Nancy Krieger proposed a definition that was then adapted and adopted by the think tank participants. Professional identity in nursing is defined as a sense of oneself and in relationship with others that is influenced by the characteristics, norms, and values of the nursing discipline, resulting in an individual thinking, acting, and feeling like a nurse. So then the major outcomes um, here, the group, group again, then convened in 2019, about half of the participants from the first think tank joined 
with this and continued its work by updating and finalizing the domains and definitions and developing exemplars. We present this webinar today just having completed the third annual meeting of the International Society for Professional Nursing just last week. Quick drink, sorry. Equipped with, um, sorry, no, I created this slide just before this. Eleven of the 50 participants volunteered to serve on this newly formed group to guide this group's work. These work groups established at the think tank continued to meet by phone and video conferencing following the event. Within three months, the definition, domains, and key elements of the competencies were in place. They were values and ethics, knowledge, leadership, and professional comportment. The 2019 think tank participants made small revisions to the definition and further clarified the four domains identified in the 2018 think tank. Also, the next steps were identified to include the development of a why statement and to name the group. From this, there were three work groups established, dissemination, demonstration, and competencies. Additionally, a strategic planning committee was established. And Julie, I think this leads to you. Thank you, Carrie Ann. In the interval between the 2019 and 2020 think tanks, the International Society for Professional Development in Nursing Members worked to develop a strategic plan as well as a mission and vision. The Society's mission is to illuminate and foster professional identity in nursing around the world. The vision is that every nurse in the world will embody their professional identity to maximize the well being of the people they serve. Sorry, I'm having difficulty advancing the slide. Thank you. So why is it important to foster professional identity? We can all point to examples of nurses who embody professional identity. And likewise, we can all describe experience with nurses who failed to form a professional identity. Formation of professional identity has a significant impact on the healthcare workforce and consequently on patient safety and quality of care. A study in one state indicated that 50% of practice breakdowns resulting in peer review were related to failures in clinical reasoning and in professional responsibility and advocacy, all things that equate with thinking, acting, and feeling like a professional nurse as articulated in the professional identity definition. Research on physicians whose licenses have been disciplined shows similar results. Nurses who fail to form a professional identity may never be able to develop into expert nurses. On a more positive note, research indicates that identity and psychological well being are linked, and that the individuals who define their professional priorities more broadly and realistically seem better placed to draw satisfaction from their role. Understanding the drivers of developing a sound, positive professional identity can enable teachers and leaders to have a positive effect on the individual nurse and the profession as a whole. Next, 
we are going to explore the implications of professional identity in nursing for nursing education, practice, and regulation and policy. I will turn it over to Kristen to speak about education. Thank you, Julie. Uh, as a nurse educator, this is a key question for me. What do I need to do as an educator to help my students form a professional identity? Nursing educators can benefit from some insights adopted in academic medicine by recognizing that formation of identity is an adaptive developmental process that happens simultaneously at two levels. First, at the level of the individual, which involves psychological development of the person, and then at the collective level, which involves the socialization of the person into appropriate roles and forms of participation in the community's work. Megan, I think we need to advance the slide if you get a moment. All right. Educators at all levels can be intentional about taking a holistic approach to education that includes pedagogies that support formation of professional identity. In addition to experiential learning, which the literature shows hands down is the most effective pedagogy for forming identity, we also need to integrate other pedagogies like reflection, intentional modeling, and narratives to help students form their professional identities. It's important to be learner focused, and this means understanding what the student's identity is when he or she enters nursing education, whether they're an emerging young adult, whether they're a second career individual, whether they're coming from a different healthcare field and becoming a nurse. Um, and this also means that we need to be sensitive to the developmental nature of the formation process. When we talk about nursing education, we need to consider all levels and points of education, including the vocational or practical nursing level, the associate degree level, the baccalaureate and the graduate levels. There's some very interesting questions and research opportunities for exploring identity formation at all of these levels and exploring identity formation in the bridge programs that bridge the gap between these levels. And this discussion isn't just about academic education. It also includes hospital-based educators. One very critical point of formation that we really need to understand and do better is the transition to practice season. Early evidence suggests that while the groundwork for professional identity is laid in nursing school, much of that formation occurs in the first two to three years of practice. Another critical point is the transition from basic practice to advanced practice or leadership roles. Thank you, Kristen. As you've just heard, it is very important to educate nurses in a way that promotes professional identity formation. I'm now going to explore the vital role that professional identity plays in practice. We have a varied audience today of academicians, researchers, educators, nurse leaders, and practicing nurses. Many of you provide direct care or provide leadership over direct care. Perhaps you are in a role in which you establish regulations or policy that governs nursing practice or care delivery. All of you have roles which in some way affect nursing practice, and you are each in a unique position to participate in the formation and cultivation of professional identity. Today, I'd like to take some time to reflect on the why. The question I pose to you is why is pro professional identity formation vitally important to nursing practice? No matter the practice setting or specialty, no matter your geographic location, the ultimate goal of nursing practice is always to improve the health outcomes of the individual and the family. And depending on your role, Perhaps that includes the health outcomes of the community, the nation, maybe even the world. Promoting professional identity. I'm getting an echo, Megan, I don't know if you can address that. Promoting professional identity allows us as a nursing profession to operationalize a clear understanding of our professional identity 
so that our unique contributions to improve health can be and are recognized. Let's take another close look at the definition for professional identity in nursing. The definition, which we shared earlier, includes language that the nurse will have a sense of oneself, resulting in that nurse thinking, acting, and feeling like a nurse. The actions and conduct of a nurse are guided by a core set of values which result in the nurse's professional behavior. The nurse's presence, words, and actions are what patients and family, colleagues, and the public see. These visible actions are what shapes public image of nursing. These actions also comprise the care that a patient receives. If core values are adhered to, the nurse's actions have the power to improve the patient's care experience and overall health. Promoting a strong sense of professional identity has many benefits to patients and their families, to hospitals and healthcare organizations, to nurses themselves, and potentially to collective health. Next slide. Two of the domains of professional identity are knowledge and leadership, and I'd like to speak a bit about each of those and their influence in practice. Knowledge is described as the application of information derived from experience, critical reflection, and scientific evidence. The knowledge is what guides nursing practice. Together with core values, knowledge directs the actions of nurses. Recognizing knowledge as a domain of nursing professional identity supports the need for continuous learning and professional development. It reinforces the need for nurses to pursue advanced education and to participate in scientific inquiry to create a body of knowledge which will ultimately improve health outcomes. Critical examination of research and dissemination of information assures that nursing practice is based on scientific evidence, thereby promoting evidence-based care to result in decreased harm and improved quality outcomes. Leadership, let's talk a bit about that. Nurses are leaders. Nurses must lead, whether that's in the practice environment or in the boardroom. Every nurse needs to develop strong leadership skills to guide practice and that leadership becomes part of our identity. We must have strong leadership skills to manage care delivery in all settings, whether it be hospitals, clinics, schools, health systems, or communities. The definition used for the domain of leadership reflects that nurses have the power to inspire others and to transform shared vision into reality. How very powerful. Nurses must create that shared vision for health and use our leadership skills to transform that vision. We must lead people, lead programs, lead policy to positively affect health at the individual, system, community, and global level. Nurses can provide leadership to create and sustain safe culture in every practice setting. Safe culture benefits healthcare professionals as well as patients. It results in decreased harm events, such as falls, pressure injuries, hospital-associated infections, readmissions, med errors, and other serious adverse events. It can lead to improved clinical outcomes, which may result in decreased hospitalizations and decreased recidivism, resulting in significant cost savings for the healthcare system. Developing leadership skills in every nurse will give nurses the tools and knowledge to interact equally with professional colleagues from other disciplines. It'll give nurses the ability to speak up in their practice settings with confidence and knowledge and to articulate the shared vision to improve health. This will assure that nurses' voices are heard. 
when designing physical spaces where care is delivered, when creating workflows for safe care delivery, when implementing technology, and when establishing programs that have the goals and potential to improve health. Next slide. There is strong evidence that having a strong professional identity improves well being and job satisfaction. I'm sure that every one of us on this call recognizes the value of satisfied and engaged nurses. We ourselves know how important job satisfaction is to each of us. As mentioned previously, professional identity, self concept, and psychological well-being appear to be linked. Individuals who define their professional priorities broadly and realistically are in a better place to draw satisfaction from their role. Forming identity as a nursing student and cultivating that identity throughout a nurse's career during practice transitions can lead to increased well-being and satisfaction. I would even assert that having strong professional identity coupled with the resulting behaviors may decrease burnout, as well as offer a way for nurses to mitigate moral distress in complex practice situations. This is an area for more research to explore and test these connections. Did, did, we, did we skip a slide? Do you want to go back one slide? I'm not able to control the slides. Okay. Um, we talked. We did that slide and that one. And um, okay. Sorry. So we'll start here with the uh, promoting professional identity in practice. So we've talked a bit about the benefits. We've talked about the benefits. Um, to the patient. We've talked about the benefits of having a strong professional identity for the nurse and as a consequence to the organization. We all know that organizations that have highly satisfied and engaged nurses have better outcomes, um, have less nurse turnover, etc. So now that we've established the importance and the benefits of a strong sense of professional identity, what are some steps that can be taken to promote professional identity in practice? First, it's probably important to begin by raising awareness, by sharing the definitions of, uh, the definition of professional identity and the definitions for each of the four domains. We need to educate practicing nurses and administrators on these definitions and domains. Also, some organizations approach their professional identity formation through writing a formal professional identity statement, just as you would write your nursing vision or nursing values for the organization. And you can find uh, on the website, which we'll share at the end, an example of this from the University of Kansas. And it's something to launch discussion within your organization. I would suggest that you also look at your existing uh, organization's mission, your nursing vision, values, and your professional practice model, and make sure that it is they are all aligned and reflective of the concepts of professional identity and the various domains. It's also possible to use exemplars or even real-time clinical debriefings of actual practice situations to use as a discussion launch for how a nurse's sense of professional identity shapes thoughts, decisions, and actions in practice. 
going to talk a little bit more about the next point, but it's about creating a brand consistency, which is another important aspect of promoting professional identity. Branding is an intentional process which shapes the image held in the minds of others by creating positive associations between the nurse and aspects which enhance value. Studies have shown that there is inconsistent br brand image in nursing due to the public being largely uninformed about the tenets of nursing practice and licensure due to outdated and inaccurate images of nursing and stereotypes conveyed by the media. Um, sometimes nurses are um, portrayed even positively as being caring or trusted, but that portrayal lacks the concepts of autonomy or conveys a subserviency to physicians. We need to better communicate the unique value of nursing and communicate our role as decision makers, leaders in healthcare, and make sure that's apparent to the public. Next slide. Uh, Dr. Judy Godsey's recent publication on inconsistency in brand image emphasized the need to differentiate the value of nursing from other healthcare professionals when establishing brand image, to communicate clearly the core values of nursing, and to include elements that reflect education, leadership, autonomy, and influence, in addition to the more traditional attitudes of caring and compassion. Next slide. I'd like to share with you a real world example of how in my organization, Kaiser Permanente, we're leveraging the science of professional identity in nursing, including the definitions and domains to inform the work that we're doing related to nurse positioning. Kaiser Permanente has a very established brand. It is widely used in our external communications and marketing. It's also frequently leveraged in internal broad communications. We are privileged to have almost 60,000 nurses in our organization. To strengthen the company brand and to present consistent information to employees, members, and the public, it's important that Kaiser Permanente Nursing is aligned with the KP brand. Currently, we in nursing are partnering with our marketing and communications partners, and we're working on nurse positioning to create a value proposition statement for nursing. A goal of this work includes articulating the unique value of nursing as a key member of the multidisciplinary team, and that value that the Kaiser nurse brings to the patient or member. In creating the value proposition, we'll identify the key differentiators, asking ourselves what makes Kaiser Permanente Nursing unique. The value proposition will be aligned with the organization's mission, nursing vision and value, professional practice model, and it'll be consistent with the Kaiser Permanente brand. As an early step, we're holding focus groups with nurses in different practice settings to identify themes and ensure that the message resonates with our nurses and is representative of their personal and professional identity. So we're really using the work that Dr. Godfrey and the International Society for Professional Identity in Nursing, um, we're using the science they've generated to help us um, do this work in the real practice setting. I hope that this discussion has generated some thoughts for many of you and given you some ideas on how you might promote professional identity in practice. I'll now pass the presentation to Carrie Ann, who will discuss regulation and policy in relation to professional identity. 
Thank you, Julie. So I'll take you back to where we were in about 2018 when our advisory council was initially uh, collaborating together and creating the possibility really for what that meant and um, and thinking about what that terminology was to think, act, and feel like a nurse. We knew it was really important to be sure that we were inclusive of sharing this information with the regulatory bodies, which meant the, the state boards of nursing in our discussion. So as various members of our council were out sharing this information with this work, um, it was clear that it could no longer be a silent part of the curriculum, what it means to be a professional nurse, but instead give a definition for expectations of our profession and support nursing and how we frame our remediation and disciplining of nurses whenever there's a deviation from the standard. So following our sharing of this important work, we had one board member even exclaim, you are putting into words what we have known in our hearts. In addition, having this consistent terminology also unifies our diverse community of stakeholders and our communication and policies in our documents that we use every day. And let's see. Yeah, okay. And <clears throat> we really feel that when nurses are able to fully embody their role, demonstrating a strong sense of professional identity, this allows access for nurses everywhere to have influence, to make well-informed decisions on healthcare policy serve on advisory boards where decisions about healthcare policy and rulemaking rule are made, inform decision-making where key organizational decisions are made in which nurses are qualified to speak to. And now I thank you for letting us share and Kristen, I think you're gonna wrap it up for us tonight. Uh, yeah, it's muted. The concept of professional identity in nursing is a global concept, and there are a lot of questions about this. Remember that our vision is that every nurse in the world will fully embody their professional identity to maximize the well-being of the people that they serve. The practice of nursing varies significantly based on context, culture, and resources. And this raises interesting questions about what professional identity looks like in these varied contexts. For example, the gentleman in the photo there is a nurse. He functions like a nurse practitioner. And he and his colleagues, a group of about half a dozen people, including two professionally trained nurses, are responsible for the care of 28,000 people in a 19 kilometer radius. So what does professional identity mean in a setting like that? What does it mean in the US? What is common to professional identity around the world? We're eager to partner with colleagues around the world to explore these questions. A focus on professional identity in nursing may provide the tools for enhancing and amplifying the profession of nursing across the globe. And finally, I want to talk to you a little bit about the exciting research that's going on. Uh, the members of the International Society for Professional Identity in Nursing have engaged in research in the past, and I'm just going to mention to you a few of the things that are going on right now. The International Society for Professional Identity in Nursing is committed to ongoing research, discovering and disseminating new knowledge about professional identity in nursing. Some of the cu current research initiatives include the scoping review of that group of international literature. It's being conducted by Dr. Nelda Godfrey and Beth Young at the Kansas University Medical Center. Uh, the Professional Identity in Nursing International Survey being led by Dr. Phillips at Duke University uh, that was an, a result of Carrie Ann's testimony before the Oregon Board of Nursing. And so we were able to survey every nurse in the state of Oregon. And data has been collected from over 700 nurses and is currently in the, in the data analysis phase. 
The National Study of Faculty and Administrators' Perceptions of Professional Identity in Nursing using the Professional Identity in Nursing Survey is being led by Dr. Cindy Clark of ATI. You may be familiar with Dr. Clark's work on civility and by Dr. Tula Landis of Washington State University. A demonstration con project working with nurse managers is currently underway in Kansas under the leadership of Christy Frisbee from Pittsburgh State University in Kansas and Dr. Nelda Godfrey. That project was started. Um, the COVID pandemic has put it on hold temporarily, but they plan to continue that one. And finally, Dr. Cole Edmondson, the Chief Experience and Clinical Officer at AMN Healthcare, and Dr. Lindell Joseph of the University of Iowa and the American Organization of Nurse Leaders have done some really beautiful work developing a conceptual model for, for formation of professional identity in nursing. Next month's webinar on October the 20th will feature their work on the conceptual model. We wanna thank you for your participation today. For more information, visit the Innovative Partnerships and Practice site at the Kansas University School of Nursing where you can find links to our quarterly newsletters and updates on the work of the International Society for Professional Identity in Nursing. Or to join us in our work, contact Lauren Roberts at lroberts6 at kumc.edu. We're looking forward to your questions and further discussion. Megan, do we have any questions in the chat box? Yes, um, we have one here. Are there any specific nursing education interventions we should be adopting as we educate nurses? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you know, and part of my interest in this came from reading Educating Nurses, A Call for Radical Transformation. And, and one of the things they really talked about uh, in that that was a big national study was um, that at the time the study was done, we sort of had nursing education separated into this is clinical and this is classroom and this is the lab and that we really needed to integrate those things. And I was primarily teaching in the classroom at the time. So uh, one of my questions in my research is what can I do in the classroom that's going to help form professional identity? Uh, Obviously, clinical is huge in forming professional identity. Um, the biggest thing in the literature was reflection, um, helping our students develop reflective practice. And so one of the things I do right now, I'm teaching uh, undergraduate students who are in their first clinical semester, and I intentionally write reflection questions. In fact, I wrote one this week. It's they've, they've just finished their first four, first four weeks of clinical in the hospital. They're about to rotate to another unit, and I ask them to reflect on where they started at the beginning. And now give me an example of how they think like a professional nurse, how they feel like a professional nurse, how they act like a professional nurse. So developing skill in those reflection, writing those reflection questions is very useful. Um, the thing my research participants talked about the most was modeling. And there were lots of layers of modeling, modeling how to do patient care, but also modeling how to get through academics, modeling how to communicate with colleagues, how to communicate with other healthcare professionals. And an interesting point too is helping students reflect on that and taking advantage of the chances when they see poor modeling and talking through that with them and giving them a chance to, uh, to reflect on that. Um, and then narratives, we telling stories is a powerful way to learn. Um, a lot of you who are educators may be showing YouTube clips or having your students watch movies or having students tell stories of experiences in the hospital. Those are all narratives. And I'm going to read a question, but also I want to say one thing too, which is also start soon. Like it's never too soon in nursing education to start soon about all those things that Kristen was saying too. Yeah, I, I would suggest that formation of professional identity starts as soon as the students enter a classroom that's taught by a nurse. So in some schools, that's when they're 18 years old as a freshman. In some schools, that doesn't happen until their junior or senior year. Yeah. So I have a question here for you guys, for all of us. So when I focus on public health issues that impact health outcomes, I do not feel like a nurse. It feels that being a nurse is about clinical care delivery. 
I suspect this starts at an educational level and the focus is out of the NCLEX on clinical care primarily. So I'm not sure what the question is, but it sounds like. You want to take well, that one, Julie? Well, I think the, the question or the, the comment it actually is uh, reflects that many of us start, you know, our nursing practice in an acute care environment uh, right out of nursing school, or that's the nursing school experience that you have. Um, and clearly that's been the traditional experience. I, I do think that there is a move to include more ambulatory education in nursing curriculum. Um, but I think it, it's having conversations and we're, we're working to develop some exemplars where people can in a, you know, a simulated uh, session, watch a video and talk about the reaction of the nurse and how the nurse embodied their professional identity. And I think and this is a really good comment that you've made. And maybe that's something we should be working through about how do nurses who aren't in a traditional practice setting um, how does that shape their identity and how do they use the domains of the professional identity definition to guide their actions and how do we reconcile that with still feeling like a nurse and feeling like you're uh, delivering care. I think um, managers, nurse managers, um, often go through a very similar feeling. They feel like they're doing programmatic planning, they're doing budgeting, they're doing hiring, and they, they feel that loss of the patient contact. It's still being a nurse. It's a different level where you're impacting care. It's not in, in the room or in the uh, at the point of care, but it's all the support systems that go into that care being allowed to be delivered. Two for practice and regulation also, right, Carrie? Well, exactly, yeah. Um, and I think that's probably the side that um, is not thought about enough and back to the, what. I really wanted to kind of share a little bit more about is that I feel like that we don't talk about regulation soon enough or broadly enough or succinctly enough to students that we we mention Nurse Practice Act, but we really don't share with our students what that means or take them to the place that that lives and explain what they're really going to be held to once they're licensed. Um, because I can remember many times as a student being in that place where it was referenced, but yet not knowing where was that? You know, this was nearly 30 years ago, so we didn't have the internet to go and Google it out. And we didn't, you know, have a living document in front of us. So it was just referred to. And having that really knowing what that means for our nurses is really important and to be knowing where they go to as a representative of thinking, acting, and feeling, because if this is their representation, if this is who their body is to be their peer, then that's an important body to be familiar with. Well, and I would also say, you know, remember that nurses invented public health. Florence Nightingale was at the bedside for maybe two years, and the rest of her career was impacting the health of the public through public policy work. Um, I spent the last two years teaching public health ethics and uh, to public health students, and um, you know I'm struck by how much of their thinking was already part of my nursing thinking. So mm -hmm. you know it goes goes back to the narrative to help you feel like a nurse. Look at some of the nurses in the history of public health that have made a huge impact. Really good point. Thank you very much. The next question is, there are different scopes of practice for LPNs, RNs, nurse practitioners, DNPs, and at least two different educational pathways of entry into practice. All of these trends tend to create fractions within the profession. Please comment on this as it pertains to the professional identity.
Carrie Ann, I, I know you're very passionate about this. I, I think understanding professional identity and what points, where the points of formation are across that um, that continuum, forming identity takes time, right? So across that continuum of LVN, LPN, education, ADN, uh, I think an interesting question is what identity formation is happening in that when people are doing a bridge program from an ADN to a BSN. I think I think we've got more research to do to understand <clears throat> what those steps are, and I think if we understand each other a little bit better. Um, we can respect each other a little bit more. Uh, Carrie Ann and I, and, and she's very, Carrie Ann used to be an LPN, that's where she started out, right? So she's very passionate about this, but we got to testify, or we got to do a presentation at the Cal uh, California uh, Vocational Nursing Educators Association. And as we asked them to kind of explore these ideas, for example, one of the big domains that they talked about was scope of practice. It, it's a much bigger issue for an LV and LB, LPN to think about their scope of practice than I think maybe it is for an RN. But Carrie, I'll, I'll defer to your expertise on this. Well, I just think that anytime you have a role transition, there's a letting go of what that role is too. And you've got to be thoughtful about that too as you are making that transition of what that looks like. And that um, that there are people around you too that have ideas and perceptions, including yourself, of what that tra transformation might look like. And that it's not always exactly what you felt it might be. And I experienced that myself each time I went through those transitions. So it's real important to be thinking about that transition as you head into it would be key. And I do agree, uh, Kristen, that there is a lot more, especially I think in that LPN to RN transition is a real big, where I think there's still a lot of um, gap. Yeah, in my literature review a couple of years ago, I mean, I found one article about this, so there's more questions to be asked. But part of the conversation we've been having too is about integrating the RN role with the uh, delegated medical roles in the advanced practice roles of so the NPs and the, the CRNAs. Um, and we do have some people in our group that have done research in this area. You know, another little thing that I don't wanna forget about to say is that within our own profession, if you will, there are people that do not see licensed practical nurses as professionals um, or license, I mean, they, they're, well, yes, they're licensed, but they don't see them as part of like professional nursing. And so that's something when we talk about what is it to be a professional that some people don't have, they want to make the distinction of, look, you are being professional once you, you know, at, when you enter this profession. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I've, I've heard the same distinction made between <laughs> ADN and BSN, and I, I don't know that it's particularly helping us because people feel disrespected. And, mm -hmm. and when people are making a transition, we need to respect, Carrie, and you alluded to this, that they're coming with an identity already, and if they're already a health professional, it's a hard one identity. And we need to really be respectful of that and then help people, you know, kind of soften up, open up the edges of their identity so they can weave the new things into it that, that we're, you know, the identity we're trying to help them grow into. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, another really important facet of identity formation is each one of us has a personal identity also. Your, your background, where you're born, your life experiences, your education, everything forms that personal identity and it's important to acknowledge that and if you look at the circle your personal identity is here and your professional identity is a piece of your personal identity so there there i think are always nuances in in people's interpretation and their feeling about their identity I think that's important to acknowledge those and people will have differences if they've gone through different educational programs, if there are different entry to practice requirements. That doesn't go away. We have to acknowledge it and then figure out a way to make the definition and domains applicable. 
We only have about uh, four or five minutes left, but I wanted to ask one more question directed specifically to, uh, I think you, Dr. Reed, I think you talked about this for a moment. Is nurse identity, identity defined by the organization's mission or does it exist outside and independent of a specific workplace? Professional identity of the nurse definitely exists independently outside of your work or practice setting. If you are creating a professional identity statement, such as um, the University of Can Kansas has done, I would say that there needs to be acknowledgement and recognition and alignment of the organization's mission. And in our work at Kaiser, um, we're really, we're first working on brand identity and that's, that is, um, we're doing that work in parallel to our professional identity work as the science around professional identity grows and as our knowledge grows. But I would say that uh, we, we embrace the, de the definition and the domains, but it has to be congruent with the goals of the organization and with the values that are in place in an organization for nursing. I hope that answers. All right. Well, we're just about out of time. We have multiple questions that are still left. <clears throat> However, I do want to remind everyone that this is the first of five webinars that we, we will be giving uh, over the next uh, five months. Uh, we will have one webinar per month, so please check back to the Sigma website uh, to get an idea of when the next uh, presentations will begin. Um, I do want to thank so much uh, to our presentation, to our presenters today uh, for all this great information. Sigma is definitely grateful that you took the time to share with this audience, and we look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Thank you very much. As a reminder you for to our the opportunity, Matt. You're yes, very thank you. Thank it's you. a real honor. As a reminder to our attendees, please submit uh, your state and country you are from in the questions feature so we can get that uh, tally. We hope you enjoyed this webinar, and be sure to check out Sigma's upcoming webinars, podcasts, and resources to support you and your colleagues at www.sigmanursing.org. As pre also, previously recorded webinars and podcasts are freely available in the Sigma repository. Thank you all for joining us and have a wonderful rest of your day. <laughs>